Hey guys, what's up? Ants Canada here. Welcome to another Ants Canada video. I wanted to redo a tutorial, probably one of our very first tutorials, because I feel like we have so many tutorials now that some of you might be missing some of the earlier ones, and some of the earlier ones tend to be some of the most important. So in this video, I'm going to explain how I do my test tube setups when you catch your DL8 queen. For me, the test tube setup is still the best way to get your ant colony started, and I'll explain why through the video. So to start, what you need is a test tube. Now, I've got two test tube sizes here. Now I've got a glass test tube here, and then we have the plastic test tubes like this, which actually comes with your kit if you order one of our new hybrid nests. They fit right into the entrance, and uh, they're very convenient. Look how much space that is. Now, if you don't have any test tubes, what I recommend to people is you go visit your local floral shop, you know, place where they sell flowers, and ask them for some water picks. Now, water picks are kind of like test tubes that are usually made of plastic. They're either opaque or transparent, and they're used to place at the ends of flower bouquets. Uh, to keep the flowers fresh and you know you usually put water there with some other chemicals to keep the flowers fresh but they can also be used for your test tube setups for your queens they usually are very cheap um, especially if you buy from them in bulk I used to buy mine for 10 cents each but they can go as high as 75 cents Canadian so they're very affordable it's kind of like the ant keeper secret emergency test tube I used to buy my test tubes from a science supply shop near my place, but I'm sure there are places online where you can buy test tubes to use. Or in the case of Philippines, I just go to the pharmacy and buy some there. So you've got your test tubes. What else you'll need is some cotton, of course. Yeah. Um, you'll need some kind of pokey. And what I use is either a barbecue skewer or what's even better are these Q-tips, which are great because they're clean and sanitary, you want to be working with very clean instruments because uh, you don't want any fungus or bacteria to be in your test tubes because then it leads to mold outbreaks and whatever disease and you want everything to be sterile as much as possible, even your test tubes. So make sure to wash your test tubes, wash your hands, wash everything, make sure everything's as clean as you can to make your queen's environment as sterile as possible. Um, I myself like to use bottled water. <laughs> um, you can use water from the tap, but me, I'm just, I don't know, extra careful. So I like to use bottled water, purified water, filtered water, whatnot. Okay, so to make the test tube setup, you need to fill your test tube with water. Now, I personally fill it up to here with water. It's a little bit past halfway. So I'm gonna take my bottled water here. I suppose you could use a syringe to put water in here, but for me, the less instruments used, the cleaner. So I'm just gonna try my best not to spill anything here. All right, so something like that. I've got water that's about just past halfway. Then I'm going to take some cotton. That might be a little much. Let's pull some of that off. And stuff that into the test tube like so, about that much. Now with my pokey, I'm just gonna push it in quickly because if you take a while there might be an air bubble that'll form and that's kind of annoying. I push quickly in there, see? No air bubble. And then I'll kind of push the surface so that it's slightly moist. Like that. And no water will come out, you see? So it's kind of like that. If there is some water, I'll kind of, I'll kind of shake it off. Excuse me here, it's like close to 40 degrees here in Manila, so not only is water spilling from this test tube, but I'm also sweating. I know it's kind of gross. <laughs> Gotta love living in the tropics. Okay, so I've got my test tube set up here, ready for the queen. Once the queen is inside, I simply place this cotton swab and enclose her in like so. Now I had someone write to me saying that his parents were finding it cruel that we're keeping ants in this little section here, but in actuality, this is what they do in the wild. They create what's called a claustral chamber. Most ants, after mating, 
um, these queens will bury themselves in the ground or in a piece of wood or in some kind of hollow of some sort, and they'll close themselves off. And what this does is it creates the perfect environment for them to raise their young. What's great about the test tube setup is that the ants can hydroregulate. Now, what does that mean? That means they can choose where to place the eggs according to how moist or humid it is. So if your ants prefer really humid and moist areas to raise their young, they'll go close to the test tube uh, hydration cotton right there. And if they like more drier areas, they'll move over to the drier side. So that's the beauty of the test tube setup. It gives them the choice to hydro regulate. Now, another thing too is you don't have to worry about providing your ant water, which is cool. They have all the water they want. Now, if you're working with clean materials, usually a test tube setup will last anywhere between a few weeks to even months. Um, what ends up happening sometimes is the cotton will start to mold. That's normal. Your queen ant will have a bathroom area and the cotton being organic will mold. So it's okay to have a little bit of mold there. That's fine. But when it's really taking over and the whole surface of that cotton there is a different color due to the mold, then you know you have a problem. You'll have to move your queen to a new test tube. And to do that, you simply, well, one of the ways is to attach two test tubes together and then allow the queen and her workers, if she has any, to move to the new test tube. Now, when your queen is in her test tube and she's in her claustral chamber, I highly recommend that you put her in the dark somewhere and don't disturb her. I know it's hard to do that, especially if you're a new ant keeper, but it really helps if you keep your queens in the dark. I just recently had a customer write to me saying that he had a bunch of queens in test tubes and he divided them in two. And some of the queens were in the light, just kind of like sitting on a desk somewhere, I suppose. And the other group was hidden away in the dark somewhere. And he found that the brood developed a lot faster than those queens that were exposed to the light. So as much as possible, keep your queens away in the dark somewhere. So you guys want to see where I keep my queens? Now here in the Philippines, outdoor kitchens are kind of a popular thing. Um, and I keep my queens in my herb cabinet. <laughs> so deep inside my spice rack in my cabinet, I have here a Fedolagetin diversis queen. And she's got a batch of eggs there. And I'm keeping her in the dark. Now, I've had this species before and she didn't make it. I hear they're very, very difficult to start a colony from just you know one queen but I'm hoping this one makes it the first setup if you saw one of our previous videos involved some soil and the queen created her own claustral chamber in a test tube setup and she ended up dying for reasons I'm not too sure but I'm hoping this batch of eggs makes it and I'm able to create a colony from just this queen here I make sure to check up on her maybe once a week, but she's in the dark and cozy with all my spices. And as well, keep them warm. Queens that are kept warm have brood that develop a lot faster. Now I know this is completely random, but I'm sweating so much because this room doesn't have air conditioning because it's kind of my bearded dragon room. Now remember my bearded dragon, the small lizard that I had in one of my previous videos? Well, he's not so small anymore, he's quite large. Um, and it's rooms like this, if you have a reptile room, where you can put your ants and your test tube setups. It's a great place to... Here, here you go. Right. It's a great place to put all of your test tube setups because it's warm and you don't have to use a heating cable. So your queen ants can develop their young a lot faster. By the way, thank you ZooMed Philippines for this setup, this bearded dragon kit, which was uh, given to me. Be sure to check out ZooMed. They've got a lot of great products that actually can be used for ants. Like you see this bottom here, that's called excavator clay. You can use that stuff for the outworlds. It starts off as kind of like a soil mixture. You add water and then you shape it and it hardens. So it'd be great for an outworld. The ants cannot dig in it and it's completely natural. And of course, they've got different things like temperature and hygrometer, heating cables, etc. 
So your queen should start laying eggs within, well, it can happen within a few hours or it can happen the next day or in two days or happen maybe within a week. But, oh, and sometimes they wait till the next year, depending on if you have a hibernation period. Sometimes queens will wait till the next year to lay their eggs, which is completely normal. So what I suggest is you catch your queens, you put them in test tube setups, and you wait until they die. Because if they're not fertilized, they'll essentially die. Now, when your queen has a few workers already, I suggest you don't feed them. You know, if, this is just for claustral species now. Fully claustral species don't require food during this period. So I say to feed them around, mm, after they've reached around 10 workers, um, depending on the species. And if it does seem like they're pulling at the cotton, like they want to get out, it means the workers probably are trying to forage and they need food. So that's when you can start feeding them. Some ant keepers like to feed them directly in the test tube, but a great way to feed a test tube colony, I find, is to put them into a small container, I guess, whatever your outworld will be. In this case here, I'm using a used outworld from one of our OmniNest vertical formicariums, and you place your barrier along the top, and then you treat this like the setup. So you place the food in the outworld and the ants will venture out. What you can also do is you can sort of, instead of completely removing this cotton at the entrance, kind of making a sort of hole, like maybe stick a straw in there so that it's not completely exposed and the colony is completely exposed to all of that openness because, you know, the ants like to be enclosed. So if you can somehow create a small opening for them to come in and out that would be great um, and then feed them that way and then when the colony is big enough you can attach your outworld directly to your formicarium and move this test tube sort of like that so they can discover the formicarium i'm sorry guys i'm completely sweating everywhere Ooh, it's hot and so that concludes the test tube tutorial now this tutorial applies only to fully claustral species of ants. There are a group of ants that are known as semi-claustral, which means they have to be fed during this period in the test tube. So what you can do for those species is you give them this setup right off the bat and the queen will leave and forage for food that you put in the outworld and go back to her claustral chamber to feed her young. If you're not sure if the ants you caught are a semi-claustral or a fully claustral species, feel free to write to me it's uh, contact-us at antscanada.com and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. For those of you that have problems finding a queen, don't lose hope. Uh, a lot of you from North America are writing to me saying that you're finding it hard to find DL8 queens. You still have the whole summer and a little bit of the fall. Right now, it's June 2nd, so Campanotis are flying right now. I know a lot of you guys are writing to me uh, saying you've caught Campanotis queens. Tetramorium species E, a great species especially for beginners, is flying now. Um, and then soon Formica will be flying from July to August. Chromatogaster as well. And then Laceus tend to fly from August to September, especially around Labor Day with the Labor Day ant, Laceus neoniger, common throughout all of North America. You'll find those queens flying around and they're a great species as well. So all of those are fully claustral species and can be kept in test tubes and started there. And to make all of this much easier, Ants Canada is working on a couple of products to help you guys raise your ants at these initial stages because it's so crucial. Um, and if your ants die during this stage, don't lose hope because this happens in nature. Not all queens make it. In fact, a large majority of queens don't make it past the initial stages of colony founding. So just don't lose hope. Keep trying. And if you still can't find a queen, be sure to look up our GAN project under Queen Ants for Sale at our website, www.antscanada.com. And if we have a vendor selling ants in your city, we can hook you guys up with a queen and colonies. And if you have lots of colonies of your own that you would like to sell off, please feel free to join our GAN project and be a GAN farmer. And we can help find local ant keepers to help you dispose of your ants. It's completely free to sign up and it's a great way to foster and culture your local ant community. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope it's helped. Bye-bye.
Hey, thanks guys for watching our re-tutorial on how to create a test tube setup. Wishing you guys luck this year on your nuptial flights. Hope you guys catch lots of queens. Now, if you want to check out more videos on this channel, be sure to check out our latest video on our brand new line of genus tailored hybrid nests. Really cool formicariums for your ants that are specifically geared to house your species of ants, whatever they may be. And also check out our very cool Solenopsis Geminata playlist. It's Ant Love Forever, guys. Thanks, and don't forget to subscribe.